Hey there everybody and welcome to uh, my newest video, I suppose. <laughs> I never know how to do intros. Anyway, um, this video in particular was requested by me um, because, as you guys know, if you guys have ever worked with markers, uh, Copics, Prismas, whatever, you, you tend to have options as far as your tips go. Um, with Copics, you tend to get the chisel tip or the brush tip or the brush nib, whatever you want to call it. And with Prismas, uh, Prisma has just come out with a brush nib and it's actually a really nice brush. I, I do enjoy it, but your standard Prisma color from like what I started with is always going to have your broad, let's see if we can get it focused, your broad side and then your fine liner. Um, and because of this, uh, I had to learn how to color hair using a broad tip instead of a brush tip, which is completely different in technique and everything like that. Depending on who you are, some people can match techniques. I personally cannot. I have to actually, as you can see, practice a little bit before I can pull back the knowledge that I had from back in the day of when this was my only option. Um, but I have some friends who also are stuck in the same situation of only having broad and fine tips on their markers and they asked me if I could go ahead and do a video kind of showcasing how I personally do my hair colors. Um, I tend to not think about it so to actually sit here and explain it is going to be a challenge but I just kind of go in and do what I got to do and if it looks good it looks good and if it doesn't it doesn't um but yeah so let's go ahead and get into it the first thing I recommend everybody do is get your marker colors whatever you're going to use I decided to use green for the hair today because it's just I like green um first thing I recommend you doing is popping open your pen and taking a good look at it. Make sure it's not dried out or anything because there's nothing more irritating than starting with a color and having it dry out halfway through. Oops, I just marked something but that's okay. And I also encourage you guys to go through and practice with the different line variations you can get with your tips. Learn how light you have to go to get a sort of faded look with them. This is incredibly light. Personally, I don't like that. Um, and then see what adding a little bit of pressure to your tips does. You can get line variation with a broad tip. It takes practice, it takes control, it takes thinking about what you're doing, but you can achieve different thickness lines. And with the bigger side, you can still do it, but you're gonna get, it's gonna be a little thicker on the ends. It's not gonna taper as nice. And don't forget that you have a fine tip too. You're not alone in this. There's a fine tip and your fine tip is your friend because you can get incredibly straight dark lines with your fine tip or if you use gentle pressure you can get a faded line. So I say practice before you actually color something. Get to know your pen and then try to do something like hair or whatever because there's nothing worse than messing up a picture that you've just worked on and inked and everything. But for this, this is the what we're going for right here. I tend to do um, a different, like, whereas with Copics, I blend and I flick. With these, I do lines, but I'm very careful with my placement, and I really have to think about what I'm doing with my hair. But it gives it a really, really nice look, and that's kind of what you're going for. So it's the same sort of technique, but not, if that makes sense. You just have to think about it. Now, this isn't traditionally inked. This is just printed off my computer. I did a quick sketch and threw it on here just to show you guys a demonstration of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and get right into this. The first thing I do is I consider my subject, consider my lighting sources, and all that jazz. So for this picture, my lighting source is going to be coming from over here on the upper right hand corner. So that means most of our reflections are going to be on this side. So first thing I like to do is go in and sort of mark out thickly where my reflections are going to be and then sort of follow through on down with where I know I'm going to want my reflections to trail into the actual hair. Now as I'm marking out my reflections like this, I'm also keeping in mind that I'm, I'm noting my darker areas where um, the hair is going to be gathering the most and where it's going to be its darkest. So like right here I'm probably going to want a little bit of a reflection just to kind of give the hair a three-dimensional look. And then 
here. I'm going to have some over here. I'm going to have some. Now it's okay for me to go ahead because this is lighter than the other green I'm going to be using. It's more okay for me to go ahead and make my sloppy mistakes now and just kind of get into what I call like the mentality of using markers. Oh my god, it sounds so stupid. But um, I just start using this to sort of get me ready for using my darker markers, which are less forgiving. So I get the feel for the marker. Like I said, you should practice before you actually do it. I didn't. I'm sort of doing this cold just to get the video up because I've had uh, the request came a while ago and I feel bad for not getting right on it. <laughs> my ink is actually holding up really good against these markers so I'm happy about that usually it doesn't it's doing it today so I have a little bit of reflection down there but this is just a general idea I keep my marker lightly capped and close by just in case I change my mind so now I'm gonna go in with my dark marker now I know right away that I can layer this I know this I can layer this as you can see here multiple times to get different variations. Now what I tend to do is I put in my darks and I go over with everything with the light green because that sort of acts like a blender and you can see it here. It sort of fades out that dark green and then I can go over it with the dark green again and that gives me another value that I can add to the piece and add to the dimensionality. So what I like to do is I plot out my darks right away. So I know right here is going to be dark. I know that off the bat because that's where a lot of the hair gathers. I know that right here is going to be dark. And I know that coming up like this is going to be dark because the hair is gathering right here at this point. So I just go ahead and do one of these. Now I don't just color in solid color. I, I go by line by line. So my hair technique in this takes a lot longer than normal. But it turns out so much nicer. And I do kind of flick. I won't lie. I still kind of flick. But I flick up into the lighter color, but I don't meet that lighter color, if that makes any sense. Because I'm going to bring them together later on. And then I just sort of, I could turn my paper, and I recommend you guys do too. I know that there's a hair gather right here. Uh-oh. I guess I can't leave it lightly, but there's going to be a hair gathering right here. Right here by the eye. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead in with my dark marker and move out and plot my dark and it's okay to go over the lines a little bit her markers are incredibly hard to control so you just kind of got to work with them and I know that there's gonna be a little bit darker here because there's a hair gather here and I know that it's gonna be dark here because there's a hair gather here so really what I do is I sort of make it into a puzzle of where are these pieces going to fit and then from there I keep going. Up here right underneath the bang is going to be a darker tone regardless. I can actually block that in because I know that's going to be a darker tone. There will be no lighter tones there. The eyebrows tend to be a darker tone so I'll plot those in. Same over here and where it's coming out from the part is always darker. And then under here, we're going to have darker tones because it's the hair gathering and it's behind the head, so there's a shadow cast onto the hair itself. And I also know that even though I'm plotting in my darks now, when I go over it with that, um, what is it, apple green? When I go over it with the apple green, I know that it's going to lighten up a bit because I practiced with my markers beforehand, so I kind of know how they're going to behave. So yes, just keep layering and drawing those lines. You can already see the hair starting to take shape. This is the area I'm the most cautious with right here because it's such a big area and the eye is drawn to it. So I am very cautious with my layering here. And I just try to make sure that I have to think about everything. Okay, so we have this going down and we've committed to it. Same here, we've committed to that. And again, don't forget that you have a fine liner, so you could just turn that marker around and make some of these thinner lines. And sometimes what I like to do is plot out stakes where I know that the hair is going to be sort of fading, and then I can work with that later. So keep going. We can darken that, we can bolt that in. A lot of it is getting over the timidity of making that mistake. 
in this case, I printed this, so I'm not as afraid of messing it up because, you know, if I mess it up, I'll just print another one. And I think that that's where a lot of new artists in particular shy away from. And here's where I'm going to start doing some flicking. Like, this is a very light touch. You just have to be careful because wherever your starting point is, like down here, is going to be dark because you're layering it and then flicking from it. So make sure that the point that you start, your point of origin, is a place where you want it to be dark when you do that flicking motion. I've yet to master just a straight up flicking motion where it doesn't leave a bunch of ink at the starting point. I'm just not that good yet. But as you can see, we're starting to see hair develop. Isn't that cool, guys? I'm not sure how much of it's on camera because my camera's in a different place and holy, I'm sorry if I'm if you guys are missing out on stuff and I know my hands in the way. But again, just keep it keep with it and I have it to where this tip portion, let's see if it'll focus. Where this tip portion right here, the very top of the nib is what I'm using. So it's kind of like you have to turn the marker and use the shape of the marker to your advantage. It's no different, it's like a brush tip is the same all around, but with these broad tips, you have to turn it to get what you want. And you which again means you have to be very aware of what your marker's capable of, which is again why I say you guys need to really practice, watch things out, um, rotate your marker. And again, it takes a lot of time, a lot of time to get to know your markers. But once you learn what they're capable of, what you want from them, it comes as almost a second nature. I don't even have to think about turning my marker as much as I used to. Um, so let's go ahead and plot some in here down here. It's going to be darker underneath because that's where the hair gathers. Again, you have to understand the anatomy of hair. You have to understand how it falls, the kind of shadows it casts that not all hair is a solid color, that even within these dark masses, there's still going to be a little bit of shine through. So, I mean, again, that comes with practice and understanding the anatomy of hair. So really understand your subject, and it makes doing this sort of stuff a little bit easier. Now, it's looking pretty good here. Um, I need to move, I need to kind of stop being so timid and bring some of my darks up into the actual shine area because no hair again it's not shiny all the way across anime anime would lead you to believe differently but it's true hair does not shine all the way across if it's a stylistic thing i guess i understand it and i, I forgive it but typically hair is dark no matter what and the very the shines are very very few and far between but as you can see i'm i'm starting to kind of get over that timidity but I also want to do this because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I want to go through with my apple green, which is my lightest color. And I'm still trying to follow the direction of the hair, but I'm still going to just kind of go all over and fill it in. So that way I know, okay, my base color is done. You can start like this, but I tend to use this sort of as a blender. So it shows me where I need to come in with that dark color once again and hit it just a little bit harder. And it'll take a second for this to um, dry and sh really show me where I need to do my work. But you'll see. You'll see. It'll get there. Da, da, da. Now, it's not my favorite. Oops, I'm turning everything, aren't I? It's not my favorite to color hair with the broad tips. I honestly, I've gotten very spoiled on the brush tips because you sort of can control that blending aspect. And now that Prismacolor actually offers their, um, their markers not all of them. I'm going to say that right now. Not all of the colors come in brush tips. So if it's a color you enjoy and it's not in brush tip, it's a good technique to learn how to use your broad tip anyway. But now that Prisma does offer that option, I probably will start switching all my colors as I get through them over to a uh, brush tip. Just because I, I like the feel of brush tips as opposed to broad tips. And again, the ease. But... This isn't a bad technique, and not everyone has the ability to go through and replace all of their markers, so... Now that we've gotten this going, and it looks pretty snazzy, we're going to go ahead and go in and start really nailing this hair. Now, I like to go, and now I'm going to start using my pressure on my broad tip to really add a dimensionality to that hair. Again, I'm trying to just plot out my areas where I know it's going to be the darkest first. 
and then move from there. And as you can see, I've bled through over the lines, but that's always correctable. You just have to you just have to work with the medium, not against it. And if you're like me and you tend to ink before, you you just got to roll with that punch if that's if you're going to use the technique of inking before you uh, use your markers. It's not a fun punch to roll with sometimes, but you know, them's the breaks. Unfortunately, them's the breaks. Now, this isn't very lined out, so I'm just going to take my dark color so I can sort of understand it. And then I'm just going to commit to having a dark line all the way up here. And again, if I really, really, really don't like it, I can go through with my dark, my light, and I can lighten that up a bit. I know it's going to be very dark right here, so we'll go ahead and just toss that in there. Same here, same here. You can really start to see the hair coming together now. It's just literally, I'm just changing the pressure of the pen as I'm going. And just trying really hard to maintain my light areas that I've, I've dedicated myself to and my dark areas that I've dedicated myself to. Because as it goes, as you'll see, you'll see the differences in those pressures and those layers. I'm a fan of not doing the shade color all the way across. I like, you know, kind of spreading it out. You still kind of get the general idea of where the reflection is, um, but that's a very cell shady feel to it. And with these markers, I tend to really not like the look of that. What I like to do is afterwards is go through with a gel pen and really hit those areas where I feel like the reflection is the strongest. But again, let's use a fine tip here. You guys can't even see that, can ya? Oh, I'm a terrible videographer. I'm using my fine tip here just to kind of get in there and get those little details. Because again, this isn't inked and that's part of my struggle right now is I'm very dependent on my lines where they are. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Can you even bring that in? And as you see, we can still keep some of those nice big shaded areas. I'm just not the biggest fan of them. And then here, we're gonna just kind of bring this down, add a little bit of dimensionality here. Cause we sort of neglected this side earlier. We're gonna get as much attention as the other side. Like I said, even in your reflections, you're going to have variation, so it's okay to have a couple dark lines go through there. It took me a long time because I got so used to like that Dragon Ball Z solid color reflection. It was always white for some reason, and it always just looked flat to me because of it. But when I started um, getting away from that and adding, see again, here's that flicking motion. Um, when I started adding just a few darker lines within the reflection itself, it just kind of gave it a life that I really enjoyed. But here we go. Now we can get into this dark area where I really want to just tag it with some nice dark greens. Again, this is just layering. It's layering and layering and layering and using your lightest color to lighten a bit and then layer again. And as you can see, it is shaping up pretty good. We're actually almost done. Um, but when you have mastered layering the te this technique, um, or mastering this technique altogether, coloring hair becomes a lot faster and it becomes very enjoyable because it, like I said, becomes like a puzzle of figuring out where everything goes and what looks good and where. Okay. So let's go ahead and go in with my fine liner now and just add in a few dark lines in the layers because even here it's still going to continue layering I know it's hard to see when everything's wet but um the example I showed earlier of the technique I was going to use um, at the very beginning shows that once it dries you do see the differences in those strokes which again is why you need to understand how your hair is going to work because it adds um direction 
it gives you the, the ability to lead the eye in the direction of the hair, to give it weight, to give it uh, life and buoyancy and volume. And if you're from uh, my time, where all you had was Sharpie markers, you know how to flick that fine point to get some nice faded lines because it's all you had was the sharpie markers and they're not exactly good for um, line variation. You just kind of again got to learn to work with the medium. See like right here I feel like we could actually have a darker line. So we're going to go in and add one right here. And I'm just changing the pressure on the nib a little bit at a time and layering it just to kind of give it that nice heavy feel and then with these having the fine point you could do things like just that stray hair that's kind of chilling out hanging away from the rest of the hair because you know no one's going to tell it what to do it's it's got a mind of its own that's one of the benefits to these and if you still don't like what um it looks like up here you can always go through and ink it like again this was just a sketch so it's not even solid lines and that's kind of part of the reason why I'm struggling right now is I'm used to having solid lines to deal with let's um let's go in here just a little bit just a little bit and then we'll bring this out a little bit more too because really the reflection over here wouldn't even be that strong I'm just making it strong because that's a stylistic choice I always have reflections on both sides of the hair even if it doesn't necessarily make sense it feels balanced to me when I do that though there we go some more dark lines on the inside just because we can and again if you've got a larger uh, variety of marker than I do you can always go through and darken those lines with a even darker green than dark green but all right, that's literally it. I mean, I just layer and layer until it makes sense. It doesn't always make sense, but you know, it is what it is. See, I just took away that line there, but I felt like it was almost too green, too much of a reflection. Could have used a thinner um, tip for it, but eh, I like using my broad tips. But it still gives that dimensionality. And like I said, I am one of those people who will grab the jelly roll and I will just go in and plop in the areas where I feel like the light is the most reflective. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. And that's how I tend to do it. And a little bit there. See? So it's, my technique is more of a mash of just sort of flicking, praying, and praying. <laughs> and using other mediums to sort of help bring out. It's not a perfect technique. I don't think it's professional by all means and I don't claim to be, but it does work and it does give what I consider to be very nice looking stylistic hair. Go over the white a little bit, but that's okay. Let's see. And like I said, if I went in with say, oh, do I have a marker right here? That's a 005, you guys won't be able to see, see that. Let me see if I got something really quick before I run out of time here. That's a 01, that's a zero. Okay, here's a 05, just a micron. If you just go in and start, it's dry. Oh my God. I guess I'm not gonna be able to show you guys. It's a 0005, oh my goodness. Why is everything small? Okay. Um. I didn't plan on doing this. This is bad. Well, we'll use the one. This is a zero one. It's very thin, so I hope you guys can see it. But if you just go in and start defining with your direction lines like you normally would when you're inking, it does sort of help. It does help, but like it's not necessary in my opinion. I think it looks pretty good without it. But in these darker areas, you can sort of darken in just with that line variation in here. Normally, I do a few lines in there just to give a direction to make you realize that it's separate from here but that's really not what this video is about now that i think about it it's about actually coloring hair with the broad tip which i have successfully shown you guys so 
I hope this video helped. I'm just trying to explain my process as best I can. I'm not a very good teacher when it comes to this stuff. But this is it. This is all I do. And it works, I feel, pretty well. I mean, back in the day, this is all I had. So it's just kind of how I learned to work with it. Trust me, when I got my Copix, I was like, oh my god, I'm never going back to brow tips again. But there's just some colors that Prisma has that I just, like their greens in particular, I cannot get away from. They're so vibrant and pretty. But yes, this is the technique I use for coloring hair with brow tips. I hope that this helped you guys out. I hope that somebody out there appreciates it. If not, that's okay. It's just, it was a request and I fulfilled it. Um, so if you guys liked what you saw, feel free to like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know if this helps anybody out. Uh, yeah. If you guys, you know, go ahead and feel free to share in the comments below if you guys know of better tutorials or anything like that for broad tip coloring with uh, hair and things like that. Everybody's technique is different. Honestly, I didn't learn mine until I just sat down and started doing it and started getting frustrated and practicing. So I highly encourage you guys to practice, get to know your markers, get to know what works best with them, you know, in conjunction to help make your piece look the way that you want it to and don't give up i mean you will get there you will get there we don't all start off being able to do this we definitely you know after watching one tutorial don't master it i still struggle with it as you guys have seen so i mean just hang in there you guys will get it um if your only option is broad tip you'll figure out a way to make it work but that's it from me for now i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will see you in the next video bye